I'm gonna paint my first watercolor and I'm gonna give my take on the current state of the internet. So this is my first watercolor that I've ever done as an adult. I think I did watercolors when I was a kid um, a few times because I remember using them, probably just playing around or making, I guess making little paintings or whatever with them. But this is the first time I've ever tried them and I've watched a number of YouTube videos showing how to uh, do watercolors. So I have a little bit of an idea about, you know, how you're supposed to do it. And it's it's so simple really that it's kind of intuitive, but um, you know, in order to achieve the effects I wanted, I kind of start off right there with, um, just painting it directly on, but then I f quickly figure out, I want to try to achieve this, like sort of effect that I see them doing on YouTube videos where they have like a, a, a puddle of water sort of, and then they introduce, um, pigment to it and then it kind of spreads out magically you know and i'm kind of getting that already you can see right there it's kind of bleeding into each other so it's kind of work it's working pretty well better than i would probably hope for it to work the first time i ever try it without ever having had practiced it or been taught it really so so it's working pretty well and it's pretty simple um i just bought that watercolor set it's a cheap watercolor set not that cheap but it's it is not it wasn't expensive at all it comes with a little brush that, that is pretty cheap <laughs> um and i just uh sketched in that that um but that hummingbird shape from an image i found on the internet uh, of a hummingbird just t typed in hummingbird to google image search found a good hummingbird and just uh sketched it onto the paper just to give an idea where I should be painting. And I kind of want to do a little bit of a mucha esque kind of um, outline with like, I don't know, smaller outlines in the in, in the midst of the, the greater like body, you know, of, of the subject. Uh, I didn't really achieve that because I used the same kind of markers. I used these, um, what are they called? Uh, Posca. Yeah, Posca markers, the Japanese markers, and their paint markers are really good. And I used those to outline it, and then I, but I also used them to color in in the inside. So it did, it worked enough. I don't know how great it looks or how bad it looks, but it it worked it worked well enough. And then you'll see when I do put the uh, all the colors in into the hummingbird onto the body of the hummingbird, it it does work fine with those outlines. So. That's, that wasn't a problem. So um, today what happened was I walked down to the water. I live in a beach town in near Barcelona. And I walked down to the water and the waves were really big and rough. And there's like a storm coming in. And it was just about to rain. Uh, and I just was thinking about how I've been thinking lately about how inundated I am by the Internet and just like how it's just taken over my life you know what i mean and i'm sure a lot of people do would know what i meant if they were to hear me say that so it's just taken over my life and it's so useful that's why it's taken over my life because it's so useful it's like not only is it an information superhighway it's like it's like it gives you the ability to like share well for me it gives me the ability to share my art doesn't it i mean it's become effectively a sort of mega gallery, you know, and even a museum. Uh, but it also has become a, a fear mongering device for whoever is, whoever thinks they're in charge, basically of the world, they think that they're in charge or they want to be in charge. So they want to dominate people and they want to cause this sort of tra trauma induced change like Huxley and trauma induced change in, in the masses, you know, and that seems to be what they're doing with this sort of era of fear porn that we live in at the moment. Um, and then just sort of the absurdly comic, uh, sort of political, uh, rubbish that they pump into our brains every time we click on our iPhone, you know, with, with, um, 
Trump, regardless of whether you're for or against Trump, I don't know whether or or not or or neutral on that topic. Um, I mean, you're just completely like hammered. It's just like the idea, the image of Trump is just hammered into your brain, like endlessly, endlessly, endlessly. And then just everything else that gets into the news, you name it, you know. Uh, but what I realized when I saw the waves this morning and I was looking at the water, what I realized is that the internet is not the abyss that we fear, that I fear, have been fearing it, it might be, right? I mean, I was, it's kind of been, it's been so overwhelming that I've been like fear, not fearing, but just like dreading that it might be some sort of black hole that's just going to suck everything into it and just basically, you know, usurp humanity's soul, collective soul or, or the over soul or whatever you want to call it. But I realized when I saw those waves, it could never be that. It could never take over all of nature. We'll never be able to take, mankind will never be able to dominate or take over nature. We can't. It's impossible. No creation, right, creature, no creature will ever be able to fully dominate or, or take over uh, the universe and, and sort of from God, I guess. And so that really was a huge breath of fresh air to realize that uh, the reason I, I realized it was because I was looking at the waves and I just saw how enormous and colossal they are, they were, right? And, and it reminded me that, you know, man is just like this bug compared to that, you know? And we're a beautiful bug, but, you know, I mean, so we're not ever going to be able to <laughs> stop the tide, so to speak, you know, or take over the ocean or control the universe. We can't. So I, it was a huge relief and I felt, you know, like for the past couple of days, I haven't even really been wanting to look at my phone, my iPhone. I haven't want, been wanting to like mess around looking at the internet, looking at anything like just because I don't want to, I just don't care that much anymore. I don't want to care, you know, so, but this hummingbird um, represents that kind of new dawn for me, you know, a new, yeah, a new dawn. It really does. So I'm glad it turned out, uh, you know, it turned out beautiful, actually. So what I'm doing here is I am stamping in, uh, I'm stamping in this, it's, it's called, I forgot what it's called, it's embossing ink right so it's just clear ink but it it's specifically designed so that you can put this what they call embossing powder onto the ink okay and you'll see what i'm talking about in a second but so i'm stamping in the embossing powder and you can't see it yet and it looks like it hasn't really stamped anything but wait and see because it has and what embossing powder is is it's basically just these colored plastic particles like a powder a plastic powder that's exactly what it is with color or maybe and sometimes refractive sort of qualities to it it's not mic i don't think i don't know what how they get it refractive but so you pour the um embossing powder onto the stamped embossing ink right now i'm letting the embossing powder sit there for a second and then i'm going to shake it around a little bit just to make sure that it's like sticking the powder on it everywhere. And you can see at the at the right edge, you can see where it's starting to, you can see UGH, like my last name, the last few letters of my last name. And you can see that it's already sticking to it, right? But you still can't really see it. But watch what I do now. I'm gonna take a... Okay, now I'm pouring the, the remaining, like the extra excess, embossing powder into a, another paper that I can later put back into the little jar, right? It looks like there's some stuck up top of it, but I didn't even notice that. And it didn't it didn't affect anything. It didn't seem to affect anything, so I'm not biggie. So now I'm taking this um, heat gun. It's a hot air gun. It's basically like a concentrated blow dryer. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, focus the hot air onto the embossing powder that's stuck to the embossing ink, right? I think a lot of like a lot of people, well, a lot of women, they they make like uh, greeting cards with this stuff, and it's really cool stuff. Now as you see, it's melting, and you can see that it's actually showing up. There's my name showing up, Jesse Wall, and I'm gonna do it again, and it'll show up even better. There we go. It melts it, and you don't want to over melt it, but you want to melt it just the right amount. And then when it's done, it has like a sheen. It has a sparkly sheen. It's really cool. So that turned out really good. So you know what? I like this painting. And I I like the I like how it turned out. And I like how the signature turned out. It's not a perfect painting. It's my first watercolor, but I think it's really nice, you know. And I call it Colibri, which is uh hummingbird in Spanish. And those are the Posca pens I used for the outlines.